2056 is the policy direction for new non-renewable fuel cell customer generation. Um, and Mr. Davis is going to make some presentation and ask for some direction. Mr. Davis. Yes, uh, good evening again, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Ron Davis, General Manager, Burbank Water and Power. I'll have uh, brief remarks. It's a fairly short uh, staff report, and the issue is really quite narrow. Uh, you heard comments earlier tonight uh, concerning the merits of fuel cells. I, I want to like make it perfectly clear to you and to everyone, the staff supports fuel cells. We do not have a problem with fuel cells. We like what they're doing. We're not arguing what they're doing is bad technology. Our concern is consequences. Consequences. If I were to approve the interconnection agreement, and I have the authority to do that, I then have to come to you for rate increases significant rate increases. So we have a five-year rate plan we're handing you as part of the budget, as we always do. We work to manage that rate plan, but it's virtually all caused by consequences of negative load growth due to conservation and renewable energy and the addition of renewable energy, whether customer energy or system energy. That's the entire driver for rate increases and has been for some time. But with no growth to offset this, here's what we have to do. We buy the energy, in essence, by giving a credit on the bill to, say, Disney, of nine cents, the energy portion of the bill. And then we, that's a put on our system. We don't need the energy. So they're building generation, good generation, but it's fossil generation. We're not talking about renewable energy here. Let's be clear. If there's a fossil project, including or a renewable project, including a fuel cell, we're good with that. We'll work with every customer on it, no matter what it does to rates, until we're directed to stop. This is not what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about non-renewable natural gas-fired generation that has a similar CO2 profile to any other modern natural gas fuel generation. It has other better aspects, which put it, puts it ahead in the loading order, if you will, meaning priority, meaning first conservation, then renewable, and then really clean gas. This is really clean gas. Make no mistake about it. Under different circumstances, I'd be here welcoming it and recommending it to you. My concern is the impact of putting that $90 a megawatt power as a put on the rate pairs of Burbank when I don't need any of the energy and don't foresee in our forecast due to no growth in Burbank, which is a policy call just like this is a policy call. So it's not that these devices are bad or these proposals are bad. It's a timing issue. We don't have growth to mitigate it. So we don't need the $90 a power, $0.09 cents a kilowatt, same thing, $90 a megawatt power. So we put it out in the market for, at best, $30, at best. Many hours, it's negative, and we have to pay someone to take it. Because again, we continue to build generation we don't need to meet re renewable mandates. Now, this is non-renewable energy. All I'm suggesting is we defer hooking up non-renewable generation until such time as we need it so it mitigates the cost to other customers. Otherwise, every megawatt of it that we hook up is a half a million dollars to three quarters of a million dollars transferred to other customers. Doing a fairly conservative estimate of how many people will want to do this of our large customers, that's a 30 to 40 percent increase in the five-year rate plan we're submitting to council on the 12th. That's 30 to 40 percent increase because to the non-participating customers, all non-participating customers, businesses and residents that don't do this. That's the only problem. If we had growth, even one or two percent, we could simply say we'll do so many megawatts of this a year, we mitigate it with growth. It works because we need the energy to serve new load. We don't. We have negative load growth. We are out there now selling energy that we're buying from customers in part, renewable energy from customers, that we're buying at large prices and selling it. Sometimes we're paying people to take it. But that's renewable energy. This is not. So the last integrated resource plan this council approved was conservation first, renewable energy next, to meet all growth. That's what's in the resource plan. That's what we've been doing, and that's consistent with the state loading order. The next thing in order would be this energy. 
but we don't need it. And it's fossil generation, no matter how good it is, it's fossil fuel generation. And that's all we're looking for is direction from you that we would delay, not say no, but defer for now, taking on any fossil generation in Burbank until we have sufficient growth to warrant it. That's all. We're not saying no, we're saying not now. Otherwise, it has rate, inc rate increase consequences just as if it was renewable energy. We understand why uh, customers, large customers, would like to do this. They can get grants to do this. In some places, the generation is needed. And it is preferable energy, let's be clear, even though it's not green. It, like I said, it has the same greenhouse gas footprint as a modern combustion turbine, combined cycle, like Magnolia. Same exact greenhouse gas footprint. So it's cleaner, but in greenhouse gas terms, it's a bush. So the only policy decision we'd be making tonight if there were a need for power is what should the greenhouse gas footprint be of allowed fuel cells. That would be a fairly small issue in scope. The bigger issue, however, is one of rates. And a 30 to 40 percent increase in our rate plan to me is too material to not come to you in advance before I suffer the consequences by just administratively signing interconnection agreements and then coming to you with needs for rate increases. So we're here tonight to seek your direction, not on judging the merits of fuel cells. They are a valuable tool. It's that applying that tool in this, at this time in Burbank, given no growth, will have a negative consequence to ratepayers that's material. And it's not renewable. This is only talking about fossil generation. So with that, staff seeks council guidance. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Council members have any comments? Council member Brick. And just two comments. Did you have any discussions with these folks ahead of time by any chance? Yes. Okay. And uh, number one. Number two is because of the drought and the water savings that these people gave us numbers and stuff like that, did that play any decision making along those lines or it doesn't sound like it really did? We didn't have that discussion with them or I'd have corrected their understanding. There's not one drop of water savings from adopting fuel cells in Burbank. What they don't understand is that the generation here in Burbank, while it's water-based, it doesn't use one drop of potable water. Even the pure water in those power plants is all recycled water. So the only savings there would be would be recycled water, which we dump in the LA River for the most part. So there, the water savings in Burbank, in, in this situation, in your regulatory authority, is no water savings at all. None. So that water that we dump in the river, we couldn't use that elsewhere in Burbank? Not in our 50-year plans on the master plan we gave you. If oh, everything we could do, including giving it to L.A., we can't use it all up. It would take a new agreement with Los Angeles to absorb all of our recycled water. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Ricky Belletti, then Vice Mayor Fruita. Well, I don't I disagree with you too often, Mr. Davis. In fact, I can't think of a time when I've disagreed with you. But um, one thing that, that I would like to see, um, uh, two things. One is I, I would like you to sit down with them again and see if there's any other kind of deal or any, kind, uh, any other kind of arrangement that could be made. Because if, if you're saying that fuel, the fuel cell installation will externalize, um, will increase cost to other rate payers, I'd like to see what that looks like. I'd like to see what that amount is. Um, to have a better understanding of how the installation of fuel cells at Disney and Ikea would cause the rates for non-commercial customers or commercial, or commercial customers who don't use this to go up. I don't doubt it. I just like to see the data. Is it a lot? Is it a little? I know what you're saying. You're saying it's significant, but I just would ask um, and I'd ask council, and it's up to you as a majority, whether or not we would ask our general manager to go back and meet with the folks who are here. That's number one, again. Number two, what I heard during the public comment was they were talking about renewable resources being used in these fuel cells. Not true. And what your report says, fossil fuels, and what I heard was biogas, and then I heard 
natural gas. So to tell you the truth, I don't have a handle on what that means. Okay, all they wanted to do, I think, was confuse you tonight. In no intent does this report say anything about renewable energy. So if there is the development of a renewable fuel cell, this doesn't address that. We'll do it. Tonight is only the non-renewable ones, meaning if they're natural gas fueled. If they qualify under CEC rules for renewable energy, they qualify, done. That is not what we're talking to you about. So if, if IKEA, who is the one who made the comment, Mr. Grismer, that he wants to work with staff to develop what I think would be the state's first certified renewable uh, fuel cell, I'm in. We'll do that with him. Commitment. That's not at issue tonight. This is only for non-renewable fuel cells. That's all we're talking about. The data on the rate increase is not difficult or tough to do. It is simply the half a million dollars per megawatt. It's, it's just straight up math of we buy it at nine cents and we sell it at three, and that leaves us with a half a million dollars a megawatt we have to recover from other customers. You can't buy something for nine cents, sell it for three, and break even. It's not going to change meeting with them. It's not going to change because I redo the data. In fact, saying it, I'm going to sell it for three is being generous. I'm probably going to give it away or pay someone to take it many days of the year. That's what I'm already doing. Yes. So the, saying we'll get three cents for it is frankly giving these projects the benefit of the doubt. We probably won't get any more than three cents for it. So rather than say it's a half a million dollars per megawatt, it's really a half a million to three quarters of a million per megawatt that will have to shift to other customers. Okay. Councilman Talamantes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Davis, for your report. And now, but <clears throat> like it was stated, uh, there were some statements made that I'm confused with uh, or weren't addressed in the report. Uh, can this be a, a renewable and sustainable? way of doing things. Fuel cells, can they be renewable and sustainable? Fuel cells can be, can be renewable if you use renewable fuel rather than natural gas. That is not... That's not a proposal we're dealing with tonight. I am not asking for policy direction on that. I think that direction is crystal clear. If it were a renewable fuel cell, I'm not in front of you. I'm approving the interconnection. Okay? So, and we'll, not, so, so that's it's not, not, that's it's not, not an proposed. issue. If okay. there is a renewable fuel cell proposal, I'm happy to sign it. That unless you tell me to stop signing renewable energy. But I'm, the question or the comment was that it can be renewable. Let's do it. I'm in. That is not what we're look, looking for direction on. Only the non-renewable ones, meaning the ones who burn natural gas. So the use of biogas. Renewable energy. Renewable energy. So when you get qualifies under the CEC guidebook. And now like we're talking about natural gas. Tonight, we're only talking about pipeline natural gas, same thing we burn in Magnolia. Staff is not seeking direction on anything to do with renewable energy. And I only read somewhere in the report that uh, uh, the gas company is giving some grants? Gas company is giving very large grants. That's part of what motivates this. The incentive to make it happen. Yes. And frankly, in, in other places, not in Burbank, there's good reason why the, the the state regulator of the investor-owned utility says this is good policy. There's place where there's congestion in the electric grid in California. There's places where the grid needs to be upgraded for reliability. And distributed generation, even natural gas fired generation, can help with that, with reliability and relieving congestion. There was a time in Burbank 16, 17 years ago when that would have been true here. It is not true today. Today, you have literally the most reliable grid in the state of California and among the most in the world, certainly among the most in North America. So we, it won't help us here, but it could very well be true, is true, in fact, in investor-owned utility service areas, that there's areas where their grid has congestion and fuel cells, distributed generation, even those that burn natural gas, are a public good, meaning they'll help solve a problem. If I had that problem, I'd be in front of you. But as you know, our reliability is almost unparalleled. So when the comment is made that it's good elsewhere, why isn't it good here in Burbank? Is, is, that, is that comparing apples to oranges? Apples to oranges because we don't need energy and we don't have reliability problems. So therefore, all it does is add to greenhouse gases and rate increases. 
at this time. Now, is, uh, is Glendale using this currently? Glendale approved one. We called them and asked them about it because there were some debates uh, over CEQA, uh, over having an environmental impact statement. And Glendale says, yes, that got done as a pilot. It's not happening again. Oh. So that's, that's they, they, they will go through process, I'm told. That's just what I'm told. Uh, if, if and when fuel cells come there. But again, they're different. I understand Glendale has 3% load growth. That's what I, I understand. If that were true in Burbank, again, I would be in front of you, but for n not because of the issue of rate impact, because we'd have growth to absorb the energy. I'd only be talking to you about what level of CO2 should be a, required of those who are going to put fuel cells in Burbank. Same issue as we would have if I were building generation in Burbank. It's just CO2. And that's a question the PUC is asking itself for it, those it regulates this year. But that isn't my issue. I wish that was the issue. I like fuel cells. I want to say, yes, these are good customers. They really are. Disney's a great customer, not a good customer. To tell them no is not first order of business. But coming to you with saying yes to something that adds to CO2 emissions and drives up electric rates for everyone who doesn't get the deal, that's pretty tough public policy. And the reason it drives up the rates is because there's less of our generation being used? No. No. It's because I have too much generation now. Okay. So it's not that there's less generation being used. You're buying generation you have no use for. The only thing you can do with it is resell it to somebody else. It's, it's like you already got too much inventory in your store and someone brings you more and you pay it. And the only way you can do is sell it wholesale to somebody for pennies on the dollar. That's what we would be doing. We would buy, be buying inventory at nine cents and at best selling it at three. That can only have one impact. You lose money. So what about the green to uh, the additional fees? Is that discussion been had where the companies agreed to paying fees to the? No. No one? No. No discussion? No. Nobody you mean to offset the, right. the loss of right. money on the energy? Right. No. The only thing that's happened is we made it clear to them that we have for many years had standby charges to pay for the demand charge cost recovery we don't recover otherwise. But as far as the energy charge, no. I think without the revenue, it was made clear to me, they won't do this, meaning without the nine cents being paid, that, that these deals won't happen. They need the nine cents to make it economic for them. The problem is it's uneconomic for the system. I can move money around, but I can't manufacture money. I only get it from ratepayers. And this is losing money. And ch talking about it is not going to change it. So the comment that was made about using results in water reduction. Simply not true. What water reduction? There is no water reduction. We use no potable water except for people on that entire site. Not for the fountains, not for the power plants. Even the pure water is made from recycled water. We make it right there on the site into pure water. We don't use any any potable water in power generation in Burbank. Now, you were asked about, have you met with both parties? Yes, I have. Okay. Had this dialogue just as we're having it on consequences with Disney. Did not have it quite this way with IKEA. They had indicated they had a desire to move on to a renewable project, and Mr. Somoano sent them emails saying, we're good with that, we look forward to working with you. And we still do. We look forward to working with them. If they will commit to doing a qualified renewable resource, not some undefined project where you can bait and switch to regular gas later, but a truly defined natural gas, non-natural gas, truly biofuel California CEC Commission certified unit, I'm good. Not even certified, just California CEC qualified. I Meaning meet the rules of the guidebook put out by so the So do you CDC. feel these grants were driving some of those decisions? Totally they are. Okay. The, the grants are driving this. And there are places where those grants are properly applied. Like I said, if I had reliability problems in Burbank, if we needed load met by generation in Burbank, 
This is better than building new natural gas generation. This is better than if we were buying natural gas generation from marketers. This is better. I would tell you stop buying it from marketers and buy this. But we have stopped buying all our power from marketers. We don't do that. We've absorbed it all. I'm ramping down our own generation, not only at night to minimums, but on peak now to minimums because of all the renewable we're accepting without load growth. It's just a situational problem of without growth to offset it, you have no place to take expensive power. And this power costs three times what natural gas generated fuel, fuel power can be bought for. It's another way of saying it, meaning if we went out and bought this power, we could buy it for a third of the cost we'd be paying Disney or Ikea. But I would agree with uh, Councilmember Gabaletti's request. I'd like to see the figures as well. Um, you know, we have had a good, great relationship with Disney and Ikea as well. Uh, Disney for many, many years and Ikea for the last few years that they've been here. We've had great relationships and I wouldn't want those relationships to strain just on this one issue. But I, it's unfortunate if it, if it came to that, but. Well, it's strained and I can't make it go away. I'm going to have to ask you That's for rating. My request increases. was earlier to have the city manager and you meet, and I was told that okay, I'll meet. You already met with one, but I just confirmed it from you that you met with both. Yes, I have. Okay. And I am happy to meet with them, but the economics are not going to change because I meet with them, right. unless they're willing to take less than nine cents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Fritos. Just one question, Mr. Davis. Both uh, uh, Disney and IKEA brought up uh, standby power charges. Yes. Um, can you explain how that would benefit members of the public to keep the rates lower than the 30 to 40 percent, or it just wouldn't? No, oh, that's already been taken care of. We uh -huh. have two kinds of charges for large customers. We have demand charges and energy charges. In uh, smaller customers like you and I for our home, we just bundle it into one charge and call it energy, and it's about 15 cents a kilowatt. The larger customers like IKEA or Disney pay a demand charge, and they, they pay an energy charge. The demand charge is for some fixed costs. The energy charge is for all energy, which has a fixed and a variable component. So when you ask them to pay the standby charge, you're asking them to say, I will pay because when my fuel cell doesn't work or I need it worked on, you're instantly going to pick up my load. So to prevent customers from fuel switching on you and having it borne by other ratepayers, utilities adopt standby charges. For renewable energy, those are by law forgiven from the PUC because we just want to encourage renewable energy. For non-renewable energy, there is no such exclusion. This is non-renewable energy. So we charge the standby charges. I can tell you that uh, neither party was happy with that, although Disney accepted it, as I recall, pretty uh, matter-of-factly. Uh, on the other hand, IKEA bitterly opposed to it, bitterly. And so no matter what conversation I have with them, uh, it doesn't go well in terms of IKEA. Disney, on the other hand, uh, was very reasonable in understanding our problem just wants to do this, and I don't blame them. I would want to do it if I were them too. I have one issue I hope you know, and that's consequences economically to non-participating customers from paying too much for something I have no use for. Thank you. Mr. Davis, correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is that the state of California is using taxpayer dollars to heavily encourage by subsidies this type of fuel cell development. That is correct. In fact, it's a tariff now of the gas company. Okay. Um, and uh, I think that there's two items about direction. One, item one states maintain existing energy policy of meeting electric demand with conservation and renewable energy, which is the existing policy I think you outlined earlier in your comments. Um, and that results in us, to paraphrase your comments earlier, uh, in a previous meeting, uh, energy we don't want and we don't need. Yes, sir. And you're doing that, that's because of policy of the council 
that you're following. And the state of California. Right. Well, we'll deal with them later. I'm okay. talking about but the county. I just don't want to leave them out. No, they no, count too. Okay, I'll include them, okay? okay? Then the second one is your request that's more immediate to the discussion tonight, which is defer consideration of allowing clean fossil fuel generation from fuel cells until such time as there's sustained electric growth in the city. Do we have any forecast as when that might occur? No. Our forecast that we just revised, uh, which is part of what leads us to tonight, is we have seen a decline in energy sales the last few years. That's very real, and we haven't put it in rates. We keep talking to you about it when I come with budgets, but I say I'm going to subsidize with cash one more year. Well, this year is the last year when I come to you on the 12th. I just can't keep it up. It's not coming back. It's not the economy. It's conservation and renewable energy. When you add in what we are continued to commit to do with conservation, we see loads staying at best flat and less policy about growth changes, which is a, you will have to answer for me. I can't answer for you. If I observe what's been going on and project it forward, at best, a net electric load in Burbank at best is flat. It okay. probably continues to be slightly negative. So the true direction you'd like us tonight is deferred consideration. Now, is there a need for you to have that direction, or can you make this decision on your own? You just I want can make it on my own. Good. I, I mostly need to have you understand that I will be doing that. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to suggest two things. There's two points, one and two, under policy direction. Um, I'm very respectful and understanding, I think, of the desire of Disney and IKEA to be as uh, conservation-minded and energy efficient as possible. I believe I understand the circumstances and the motivations for doing it, and I commend them, as you did. On the other hand, we do need to balance, from my perspective, the impacts on the ratepayers. Um, I don't know, as Mr. Davis stated, that meeting again on this exact same topic with the exact same circumstances will change it. Um, I don't know that Mr. Davis would refuse to meet with them if they so desired to do so. Happy to. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any um, resolution under the um, grants that are, or the uh, uh, incentives that are being proposed by the states to fix this. Uh, so from my perspective, what we need to do in the council, and I do it respectfully to the parties that are concerned with this, is to um, uh, support the uh, request for a direction on deferring consideration of allowing clean fossil fuel generation from fuel cells and still such time to sustain electric growth. I intend to do everything I can in the remaining years I have in the council to make sure we do have increased growth in the city, which will increase that uh, demand that you're looking for. Um, and I think there are ways that the council uh, can do that with staff and direction. But I'd also like to state to the council that I'm going to renew my call and I'm going to ask for it to come back at the appropriate time for consideration. We need to revisit our um, city's policy on renewables. If the state is using taxpayers' dollars to encourage the use of non-renewable fuels, such as natural gas, which is historically low now in cost, which should have a tremendous uh, positive impact as far as I'm concerned, in the utilities' bottom line, then I think we need to look at it and maybe defer or set aside some of the uh, dictates, I don't use the word dictate from the state on this, because I think it's hurting our citizens, and I think it's hurting our city, and I think it's hurting our utility. And it's not due to anything the, uh, the representatives of IKEA and Disney are doing. It's from coming from the state. And I'm prepared to uh, have a very serious discussion about a change in course on our policies with respect to natural gas alone and perhaps others. So um, I'd ask council if they wish to, um, uh, would we need a motion on this or just as a? I have it as note and file, so it's OK. OK, can we have a motion for note and file this presentation? Council Member DeBellini. I'll make the notion for uh, the notion for Moton file. You can make a notion <laughs> or a motion. We'll take either one at this. Going to need a notion uh, and acknowledge the the willingness of Mr. Davis to continue to meet with the yes, ma'am. It was number five is Noton file, the Burbank Financial this, Reserve. This one is this provide one. policy direction. Yes. Oh, well, I my apology. I thought you were discussing number five. Sorry. Well, let me restate that. Um, 
I'm going to uh, recommend that we maintain existing energy policy meeting electric demand with conservation and renewable energy and defer the consideration of allowing clean fossil fuel generation from fuel cells until such time as there is sustained electric growth in the city and um, can uh, ask our general manager to sit down again with the people who took the time to come here tonight from Ikea and from Disney and see if there's some other resolution at some point in the future. Absolutely. Councilor Gable, I'm going to ask you to bifurcate your motion Why? because I am going to vote no on maintaining our current policy. And I do wish to vote yes on deferring consideration of, allow of what he's asking for. So I can vote yes on two. I'm going to vote no on one. So I, if you bifurcate it, you'll get Will you support. vote yes on three, which was to ask our general manager to, to meet sure. again with Ikea and... Trifurcate it. All right. So... We'll do one separately, maintain existing energy policy of meeting electric demand with conservation and renewable energy. Second. Motion is second. Uh, can we call the roll on that one? Well, before you take the vote, um, I'll hold my arguments for another time, Mayor, because sure. you are I, off base on moving to non-renewable. Uh, it's not the first time I've been accused of that, but I still ask it to come back as a further discussion, Mr. Scott, if we can. Okay, so we have a motion and a second um, on number one, to maintain existing energy policy of meeting electric demand with conservation of renewable energy. Further discussion? Oh, Vice Mayor Fritos. So a... Uh, no vote on one would basically mean this is going to come back for further discussion. No. No? No. To it, talk about our energy. It, no, I've asked them on a separate item to bring it back at an appropriate could, time. Could I help with that, maybe? Yeah. We have brought you a draft, a final draft, uh, integrated resource plan to update the 06 plan. We, we presented it to council six weeks ago. I don't remember the exact date. Somebody behind me may. But it was a few weeks ago. And we will be coming back to you with the final. And that's, I forget which date, but that's scheduled. So we're bringing it back to you as that's for fine. your consideration and direction. So it's, it's scheduled to come back before you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. That was very quick. <laughs> uh, the, the Council Member, uh, Vice Mayor Frutos, uh, my understanding of a no vote on the motion on number one is that it's time for change. That the people are taking in the shorts. We're paying a millions of dollars extra for these renewables when apparently the state will allow natural gas to be used under certain circumstances. So we got to get with the state and tell them the people of Burbank have had enough. And we're not going to pay 20 and 30 and 40 percent increases because somebody in Sacramento or someplace else thinks it's a good idea. When we have these fuels and they're readily available, they're very cost effective and they're relatively clean. That's my position. And if I'm off base, we can figure that out. Uh, but in any case, that's why I'm voting no on that motion. Further discussion? But you are going to carry the fight to Sacramento. Absolutely. I, I hear you. I'll be with you. Good. Thank you. I look forward to the ongoing discussion. I would encourage a yes vote on this, and then we will have this whole issue before us in just a few weeks. Motion and second. Madam City Clerk, you call the roll. Councilmember Gavaletti? Yes. Councilmember Telementis? Yes. Councilmember Bray? Yes. Vice Mayor Prudus? No. Mayor Gordon. No. Thank you. Thank you. That's three to two on one. And now if you have a second motion. All I can say is good luck. Um, yeah. uh, the yeah. motion is to defer consideration of allowing clean fossil fuel generation from fuel cells until such time as there is sustained electric growth in the city and to further direct our general manager to continue to meet with IKEA and Disney representatives uh, trying to achieve a renewable fuel uh, portfolio as part of the fuel sales. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Councilmember Britt? Yeah, I'll support it because of the general manager's uh, say they'd be more than happy to meet with them again. I understand where you're coming from, but uh, I guess extending the olive branch meeting with them one more time, that's fine. You've offered to do that, so I'll that's why I'll vote for it. Otherwise, I was going to say I would just prefer to move forward with what was in front of us. But uh, because your willingness to meet with them again, I'll support it. Motion and second for the discussion. Vice Mayor Frudos. I'd just like to acknowledge both Disney and IKEA and trying to work on better, cleaner energy for the city and the environment. But. Because of what I've learned since I've been on council, 
that we are 33% currently renewable energy, and this is a community municipal utility that we work with everybody. I just want to be upfront with you. I cannot see myself passing on a 30 to 40 percent rate increase when I consider you part of the city family. And I know it's tough and it's not an easy decision for me to make because I really appreciate Disney who's been here for a long time and, and Aki, I definitely welcome you to our city, but my decision is based upon the whole big picture of all the residents, especially my seniors that are on fixed income. I cannot see myself voting for an energy, energy cell today that just does not meet the demands of our growth of our city. So for those reasons, I am going to be supportive of uh, our, our, our director from Water and Power that this come back at a future time for consideration again once we have the growth in our city. For the discussion, Council Member, excuse me, Madam City Clerk. Okay. Council Member Ghibelletti? Yes. Vice Mayor Fruiters? Yes. Council Member Brick? Yes. Council Member Salamantes? Yes. Mayor Gordon? Yes. Motion passes 5 to 0. Thank you very much. Okay.